This is a lesson on solving one-step equations using addition, subtraction, and multiplication transformations. Um, I will say that the the way this material, the, the way I'm going to present the material is a bit different than uh, than you may see in the book at times. So you want to follow the procedures I show you rather than the book, and I would definitely call this the Greenhill Math Department way. All right. Um, First of all, you'll notice in the, in the title the, the word transformation, and all that a transformation is when we're talking about algebra is doing the same operation and the same amount on both sides of an equation. So let's, um, with that said, let's look at using subtraction as a transformation. What I want to do here is I want to solve the following equation, x plus 6 equals 9. Before I go further, let me define what solve is going to mean in terms of an equation. This is our first venture this year into the world of equations. Uh, and to solve an equation means to means to find the value of x that makes the equation true, or whatever var variable you're solving for, in this case x. So we want to find what value for x makes this equation true. Now, um, since we're building toward solving multi-step equations, it, it, we, we're trying to develop the steps we're going to use to, to perform that kind of task. And I obviously realized that an equation like this you could do without algebra. But, but as I said, we're building something here. So we're going to take a step that we you know, wouldn't need to take if this was the, the hardest things got. So I think you can see already you know the answers is for the value for x or the solution is 3. But we're going to do transformations to solve this so that when we have multi-step equations, we know what to do. So the, what I'm going to do in terms of a transformation is I'm going to subtract 6 from both sides. And what that would do because right now I want to find out what x is. And on the left side of the equation, you have x on that side and 6 also on that side. If we take away the 6, now we'll have x alone. Now an equation is, is basically a scale. It says that equals means balanced. And right now, when I have 6 on this side with x, it balances with 9. So if I remove 6, I'll have x alone. But to keep the scale balanced, I'm going to have to remove 6 from this side as well. And that would leave me with 3. Now, one other thing we're going to need to do with these, it's going to be very important when we get to multi-step equations, we're going to also check this equation. This is our way of making sure we've gotten the solution. And this is a requirement. So, so a check would be you're going to take your values before we circle it. That is our answer. But before we circle it, we're going to plug it back in. We're going to put a little question mark over the, equation, the equal sign. We're going to ask ourselves, does 3 plus 6 equal 9? Yes, 9 equals 9. I put a little check here. Now I'm OK to circle my solution. All right. Um, one thing I'd want to mention is when we were using subtraction as a transformation, we were making use of something called the subtraction property of equality. And all that property says is that if I have an equation, if I subtract the, the same amount from both sides, then I still have a balanced equation or everything is still equal. All right. So in this next one, I'm going to use addition as a transformation. So right now, on, on the left side of the equation, I have 7 less than x, or 7 fewer than x. If I want to get back up to what x is, I better add 7 to that side. But to keep the equation balanced, I'm going to need to add 7 to both sides. And when I do that, I now have x by itself. But x by itself equals 19. And then I'm going to check it. By plugging back in, I'm going to ask myself, does 19 minus 7, does that equal 12? Well, it does. 12 equals 12. So I can consider myself checked here. And the solution for this equation is 19. And by the way, going back to that, this would use the addition property of equality. The, the transformation we're using is supported by the addition property of equality which merely says that if I have an equation, if I add the same amount to both sides, the equation will still hold true. All right, now before we go on to the next type of one-step equation we just saw, I'm going to do a quick 
mini lesson on the concept of reciprocal. A reciprocal, also known as multiplicative inverse, they mean exactly the same thing. Reciprocal is just one word instead of two, so typically we use, we'll talk about reciprocals. So a reciprocal of n, n is just a generic number, is the number you multiply n by to get 1. All right. So with that said, let's slide down and look at some of these. So what would I multiply 5 by to get 1? Well, that would be 1 fifth, because 1 fifth of 5 is 1, or if you just multiply 5 times 1 fifth, you'd multiply 5 by the 1, get 5 over 5, so that would get us 1. 2 thirds, what would I multiply 2 thirds by? Well, I'd multiply that by 3 halves. That would get us 6 over 6, which is equal to 1. Now, very, very important when you have a negative. Um, now, we, we won't have negatives yet, but uh, down the road we will look at these. Um, you'll have, but I may just throw one in there for fun um, in, in my examples, but negative, when you multiply a negative by a negative, you get a positive. So the only way for us to end up with positive 1 is to, my, a reciprocal of any number will also be negative. So this is going to, kind of a bit of a jump ahead because we haven't really talked about negative numbers, but um, the reciprocal of negative 1 half is negative 2. So, um, and let me just scratch that. Sorry, it was, we've talked about negative numbers a lot. Sorry. I was going back to my seventh grade classes, so I put my ITA hat back on. Of course, we've talked about negative numbers. Uh, so you remember this from last year. Then negative 1 half times negative 2, that gets us 1. So reciprocals have the same sign, all right? A, a, a reciprocal of a positive number will always be positive. A reciprocal of a negative number will always be negative. Um, and then um, negative four, 5 fourths times what will equal 1? Well, that would be negative 4 fifths. The two negatives make a positive, and, and you can either view this through canceling. The 5s cancel, the 4s cancel, leaving 1 behind, or it's 20 over 20. That's going to equal 1. What about a decimal? If I have a decimal like 1.5, if I want to, I could change that to what it is in fraction form. Kind of the lazy man's way of doing it is just to say, well, that's 1 over 1.5. But um, I think I'd rather you think of this, unless it's a really messy fraction, um, a messy decimal, to change it into a fraction. And so the reciprocal of 3 halves would be 2 thirds. So the reciprocal of 1.5 is 2 thirds. So that equals 1. 4 and 1 eighth. Well, if we make this 4 times 8 plus 1, so that's 33 eighths. That's what 4 and 1 eighth is. So the reciprocal of 4 and 1 eighth, we don't want to say 1 over one, one over 4 and 1 eighth. We want to say that would be 8 30 thirds. And so the reason we're talking about this is because the next type of equations we have to solve are those that we're going to, where we're going to use multiplying the reciprocal as a transformation. We're not going to use division as a transformation. Um, that tends to get us in trouble, especially when you have a fraction coefficient. And uh, trust me that it's the Greenhill math teacher's way to use multiplying the reciprocal as a transformation. So currently what I have here is 5 times 35. And, and again, an equation like this is still a scale. Uh, so 5x equals, so 5 times x equals 35. So I don't want, so if I want to know what x is, I need to multiply this 5x by 1 fifth. So 1 fifth of 5x will get me x. And I would have to do that on this side as well. And that will get me 1 fifth. So I'm going to multiply by 1 fifth over there as well, and I'll get x equals 7. Okay, so um, now, how do I, again, checking this same sort of procedure, except now we have multiplication occurring. So it's 5, we want to see a 5 times 7. Does that equal 35? And indeed it does. So it's 35 equals 35. That's checked, and we can circle this. All right, and now, um, let's so let's go on to this one, a little bit different. You have 1 sixth x or 1 sixth of x equals 2, all right? And if I have 1 sixth of x on this side, I want to get back up to all of x. Uh, and the way I can do that and, and keep the equation balanced is to multiply 1 sixth by its reciprocal. And again, we need to do this when 
you have a number multiplied by the x as opposed to in those first two problems we had an addition and subtraction relationship with the variable. And on this other side, I need to also balance it by multiplying by 6. And I will get that x equals 12. And I'll again need to check that. And so that would be 1 6 times 12. Does that equal 2? And it indeed does. So that's checked. And so 12 is the correct solution. Um, now, let's, um, let's look at one with 2 thirds x equals 8. So just adding a little bit more degree of difficulty. On this one, I need to multiply the reciprocal of 2 thirds x. Uh, not of 2 thirds x, but of 2 thirds, which would be 3 halves. So I'm going to multiply 3 halves by 2 thirds x. And I'll need to multiply 2 thirds by, eight. I'm sorry, 3 halves by 8. And you recall, we can throw that over 1 if we want to. Cancel. That makes a 4. So that makes 12x equals 12 again on this one. So again, what I did was I canceled the common factor of 2 and this 8 and this 2. That left a 1 behind here, so it's just 12 over 1. And let's check that, since this one's a little more involved. So it's 2 thirds times 12, or 2 thirds of 12. Does that equal 8? And if we look at that, we can cancel that out, and that's a 4. And so 2 times, so we do get 8 equals 8. So that's checked out properly, and we get x equals 12. All right, let's look at some equations that have different looks, um, just where the variable's kind of showing up in a, on the other side of the equation. Uh, in this one, you have 13 equals 6 plus k. Well, since 6 is being added to k, and we want to get k by itself, so we would subtract 6 from each side, and we get 7 equals k. And then we can check that. And we get 13. Does that equal 6 plus 7? And it does. So that one checks out. Let's go with 21 equals r minus 9. All right. So on this one, um, I have 9 fewer than r on this side of the equation. And so to get back to r, I'm going to need to add 9. And and I'll have to add 9 to this side as well. And that will leave me with r equals 30. And that's the same. You can leave it like that, or you can say r equals 30. Same thing. And to check this one, I will say 21. Does that equal 30 minus 9? 21 equals 21. And so we, we know that works out. So we can consider that checked. So two more, and then I'm going to move on to a couple of word problems. We'll be done. So if I have 14 equals 7 fourths times x. So what I'm going to need to do on this one is multiply the reciprocal, multiply each side by the reciprocal of 7 fourths, which would be 4 sevenths. If I want to, if this makes you feel more comfortable, throw that over 1. And then I'm going to multiply 4 sevenths by 7 fourths x. So this will just get us x over here. And this 7 and this 14 cancel to make a 2. So that's 8 equals x, or x equals 8. And to check this one, I'll say, does 14 equal... Does 14 equal 7 fourths times 8? Well, that's, that's really 7 fourths times 8. 8 over 1, so that makes it 2. So you can see 14 equals 14, so that checks. Circle your solution. All right, and finally, one with a decimal in it. Um, with this one, uh, I would say, you know, you can use your calculator on something like this. A couple of ways I could show you. Method 1 would be 
we could use the reciprocal of negative 2.3 and just one over form. So if you had negative 2.3 equals 46, you want to multiply by negative 1 over 2.3. And, and then just, uh, I forgot the G in there. Let me get that G back in there. Uh, let me get rid of that too. Okay. Two point. And that would equal 46 times 2.3. And that would have us with G equaling. Okay. Uh, correction here. This is going to be times one, negative 1. Let me really correct that. Sorry about that. So i got to go the same reciprocal on each side. So that's going to be... 46 times negative 1 over 2.3. So that'll mean 46 divided by negative 2.3. And that is, pulling out my calculator here. So 46 divided by 2.3 equals, so that equals 20. So, and... I'm going to skip the check on this step, but I want to show you the, the other method. The other method would be to convert negative 2.3 into its fraction form. So that would be negative 23 tenths. Which, and so when I use reciprocal, I'm going to use 10 over negative 23. So, um, or negative 10 23rds. So in this one, I would have negative 2.3. 3g equals 46. So my transformation here would be to multiply both sides by the reciprocal of negative 23rd tens, tens, and that would be negative 10 23rds, and that works out nicely over here. And so, because you end up here with G equals the 23's cancel, we still have a negative, so that's 2. So 2 times negative 10, negative 20. So, all right, I'm going to go on to the word problems, and we'll, we'll trust that that one checks out. Oh, I forgot the negative up here, so that was all the more reason why we needed a, to do the check, because you can see I forgot my negative right there. So I was able to correct that through doing it the second method. All right, so let's look at how we uh, set up a word problem. And again, these word problems could certainly be done without algebra here, but just to get you used to setting up word problems using algebra. Um, an engineer receives a promotion that includes a raise of 4500 in her annual salary. Her new salary is $50,750. What was the engineer's salary before the problem? So, once again, engineer had a salary, got a raise of 4500 on top of that, so that means addition, and ended up at 50750 So we're asked, notice here I said solve this by setting up a one-step equation then using a transformation. So I said define a variable. What that means is I'm going to, what I'm going to do here is, is, is tell what my variable is going to be in this problem. So let x equal uh, the engineer's original salary. So with that said, original salary plus the raise equals the new salary of 50750 Even though I'm going, to, I'm going to use units with my answer, but I'm not going to use units when I'm doing the work here. So what I'll need to do is subtract 4500 from each side, and that should give us what the salary was before. And that would be x equals, it's going to be 250 and 50 minus 4, $46,250. I'm not going to ask you to check this one because if you, your equation is not right, your answer will not be right. So we just got to kind of read it back into the 
into the problem, make sure it makes sense. So she started at 46,250, got a raise of 4,500. It certainly sounds right that she would end up at 50,750. Okay, last problem. You divide a stack of flyers for a craft fair into six smaller stacks for volunteers to distribute. Each smaller stack contains 15 flyers. So what is the total of the flyers distributed? So once again, we're going to set up a variable. We're going to use a we're going to use a transformation to uh, in an equation where we have to use a transformation. So in, and we're going to define a variable first. So let in this one let x equal the number of flyers distributed. It's usually the question that's being asked. So originally distributed, right? So that, remember that that stack of flyers was divided into six equal stacks. So we'll say x over six, and in each of those stacks were 15 flyers. So this is the equation we need to we need to solve. Now, since x is divided by six, this is really the same thing as one sixth x. And so we can see with that set, what we're going to need to multiply 1 6 by is 6. That'd be the reciprocal of 1 6. We could also see it as counteracting this division of 6. So we'll multiply by 6, and we get that x equals 90. So there were originally 90 flyers in the, that were distributed. Okay, that's the end of the lesson. Thank you very much, very much.